Hello, my name is Amy and I am a housing advocate who puts together educational videos on the internet. Some of my more recent videos haven't had any narration, so I am providing a voiceover on top of light commentary to talk about affordable housing. Affordable housing, as defined by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, is when an occupant pays no more than 30% of gross income for housing costs, including utilities. The concept of affordable housing is predicated on a unit's market rate value determined by the individual property owner, or the landlord who has the ultimate say in how much they charge their tenants, whose purchasing power is determining whether that unit qualifies as affordable. Most major U.S. cities and towns do not have enough units that are considered affordable for low and extremely low-income tenants. This is known as the affordable housing shortage. Roughly half of the rental population is paying over 30% of their income on rent, which means that they are cost burdened. One quarter are paying over 50% of their income on rent as well, which means that they are extremely cost burdened. HUD could enact federal rent control policies, of course, to ensure that all units in the rental housing market are affordable for all tenants. But instead, HUD offers limited resources to maintain the department's affordable housing stock, which is what most people think about when they hear affordable housing, the designated units or buildings requiring participating landlords to accept housing vouchers and other subsidies offered through HUD or local housing programs. So let's talk about landlords who on average make $97,000 per year compared to all other households in all 50 states, they are doing quite well. Well above the median household income of $62,000 per year and three times the median personal income of a little less than $36,000 per year. And that's why the disparity between lower income households and landlords annual profits is especially barbaric. There's even a term for this, coined by academics Matthew Desmond and Nathan Wilmers, who call this practice tenant exploitation. The following is an excerpt of an opinion piece written by Richard Florida, who says, quote, Desmond and Wilmers orient their research around the concept and reality of exploitation. Exploitation is something that is usually associated with workers in the workplace. Marx famously theorized that capitalists derived their profits by exploiting the working class. He encapsulated this in his notion of surplus value. Workers are paid for only a fraction of the value they generate, and the surplus, in effect, is handed over to the capitalists. Therefore, housing exploitation is defined as the amount of rent paid relative to the market value of that housing. It's also measured as the ratio of annual rents from all rental units over property values. The level of exploitation rises as the ratio of rent to property values grow. We'll get into the details of this equation in a little while, but for now, think about this as the amount of rent you are giving your landlord as a percentage of the building that you are paying to live in. Let's get into the research design and methodology of the study that delineated communities into three neighborhood types to measuring varying degrees of exploitation. In neighborhoods where 50 to 60% of residents live in poverty, the amount of rent collected in a single year is equal to 25% of that property's total value, which means that in lower income communities, there is a higher exploitation rate compared to neighborhoods where less than 15% of residents live in poverty and landlords are only collecting 10% of the property's total value. The study proves that rental rates do not correlate to a property's worth. 
Although rental properties in lower income communities have a lower appraised value, landlords disproportionately collect more rent money from poor tenants than non-poor tenants. The study even found that landlords are generating more profits in low-income communities, collecting $298 per month in poor neighborhoods compared to $225 per month in middle-class neighborhoods and $250 per month in affluent neighborhoods. Even when units are priced at the lowest end of the market, they're still unaffordable to millions of underpaid working-class tenants. It's no secret that landlords are actively participating in class warfare. They are benefiting from the downward social mobility of working class residents stuck in a perpetual state of rentership. It's time to fight back against slumlords.